Hello everybody, today we're going to learn how to create this Avengers logo in Python using the Turtles graphics library. So before we get started, go ahead and download the starter code in the description down below. If you look back at the previous Turtle video, it has some of those same components. It allows us to simply create a screen using a certain width and height, and we set the background color of the screen. We make sure that you can't resize the screen, and then for the pencil, we set the pencil's color, its shape, which could be arrow, blank, circle, classic, square, triangle, or turtle. We set the pen size, and we set the animation speed. Here we have an empty method for the Draw Avengers logo, which we will be filling in throughout this tutorial. And finally, the main method, which ties everything together. We start by creating our screen, creating our pencils, draw the logo. And then at the end, we want to pick the pencil up and hide it so it doesn't appear anywhere. And finally, turtle.dom, just make sure the screen stays off on unless we close it ourselves. So if I run it right now, we have an empty screen, I can close it. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's take a look at what the logo comprises of. You want to think about drawing this in terms of adding layers and creating abstract space. So first we can see there is an outer circle. And then you can think of the outer circle as being totally filled in with black. And on top of that, we're going to draw an inner circle totally filled in with white. And that'll get us this sort of uh, ring on the outside. And then after that, we're going to paint this box shape from here to here. And then we could go with this one. And finally, this one, one triangle, two triangles. Those five or six shapes will comprise on how we're going to draw Avengers. So in the previous tutorial, we learned a couple of methods that lets you go to a coordinate position and lets you draw a circle amongst other things like filling it in and being able to move around. So to make our lives a little easier, <clears throat> we want to go ahead and create a couple of helper methods. So the first helper method we want to create is going to be one that lets you draw a circle around a center point. Because traditionally the way turtle works is, I can demonstrate this now actually, if we did pencil dot pen up, pencil dot go to, and remember zero zero is the center of the screen, and we do pencil dot pen down, and we start our circle, and let's say we'll give it a radius of twenty. If I run this, it starts the circle from the. Let me make this bigger to make it easier to see, and I'll also set animation speed to something a little more visible. It allows you to see that the circle starts at zero, zero, and it draws up from there. But we want the center point to be something predictable like zero, zero. So to make the center zero, zero, we just have to apply a little math that will shift down the circle. But to make the whole process easier, we're going to go ahead and make a method that does this for us. So we'll make a method called draw circle. And the parameters it'll take in is the center x, the center y, the radius of the circle, and some parameters that are optional. It'll be called should fill, because sometimes you might want an outline for a circle, sometimes you might want to fill it in. So by default, it'll be false. And pen color, by default, we'll set the pen to be black, and the fill color to be black as well by default. If this is the first time you guys are seeing the way optional parameters are in Python, they are quite handy to be using. And the way it works is that, let me make this compile. The way it works is that any parameter that does not have this equal sign is basically a parameter that has to be passed in. It's mandatory, it's required. But if you give it an equal sign and you give it a value, those are called optional or default parameters, so they don't have to be passed in because without passing in should fill, we'll just assume that it's false. Without passing in pen color and fill color, we'll just assume that they're black. So you only have to pass in the value if you want to override it with something else. So for now, we need to go ahead and grab our pencil, global pencil, and pencil.pen up, pencil.go to, now, since we want the center to be the center X and center Y, we put the center X and we have to do center Y minus radius. 
This allows us to draw the circle around 0, 0, or whatever x, y we give it, rather than starting at 0, 0. Pencil dot pen down. We're going to set the pencil color to whatever, either the default or whatever was passed in. And same for fill color. And now we do some checks. If should fill pencil dot begin fill, and we draw a circle as usual, pencil dot circle radius. And same as above. If you should fill, then now we're ending our fill. So this method will allow us to draw the circles that we want. And we can see instead of all this, if I just do draw circle. We'll start at 0, 0, radius 100. I'm not going to pass in any other parameters. Let's see what this does. So this now creates our circle around that 0, 0 point. So let's see. We're a bit away from the Avengers logo, so it needs to be a much bigger circle. So let's go ahead and make this 300 and see what that does. And Let's also set our animation speed back to zero so it's easier to test things out. That looks pretty good. So now that we have that outer circle, we want to fill it all with black. So here is where you can do your optional parameters. On a Mac, if you do Command P inside the parentheses in PyCharm, it'll show you the parameters left to fill. So should fill, this should be true, and I'm fine with the defaults for black. So we have our black circle. Next up, we're going to make our white circle. So same center point. It'll just be a smaller radius. Should fill true. This time, we have to override the fill color. I want it to be white. So notice that that is quite a bit thicker than the one in the Avengers logo. So let's go ahead and change that radius a bit. Maybe I will make it 270. And let's see how that goes. That's looking a lot better. I think it's a little bit too thin, so let's go with 260. That's perfect. So next up, we're going to be drawing this A shape. And before we get into that, let's go ahead and make our lives just a little bit easier by being able to figure out what coordinates on the screen we're clicking on. So to do that, we're going to add a on-screen click listener into our screen property up here. So all you have to do screen dot on screen click and we're going to pass in a method that we make so let's make a method to print the mouse coordinates print mouse click coordinates and everywhere you click it's going to take in an x and a y position and all we want to do is print it out in a nice way um, so if you guys haven't used f strings before they are a really nice string method in python that allows you to pass in variables inside of a string in an easy way, just like so. Every time you use these square brackets, you can insert in a variable and without having to constantly append to the string with a bunch of plus signs everywhere. So we're going to print this out. And in fact, let's also go ahead and draw a circle where we have the x, y coordinates so we can visually see something. And let's fill that in. So all we did is we added a on click listener and we're going to pass that in here. And whenever you pass in a function to another function as a reference, you do not use the parentheses. If you use the parentheses, that's calling the function, but we're just passing in as the reference by saying, whenever you click the screen, it should call this function and it'll pass in these variables automatically. So when we run this, now, when I click on the screen, if you guys can see these dots that are coming up, we can see the coordinates for those dots on the left over there. This is really going to help us as we start making the shape now. So let's think. The shape for this, we're going to, let me place down some dots. If we put a dot there, 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 and there, that four dots connected, if we fill that in, it would create this left part of the A over here. And that's essentially what we want it to do. So let's go ahead and make another nice convenient method that'll help us draw any polygon, not just a circle, and it'll fill it in for us. 
So we want to call this method draw polygon, and it's going to be very similar to the draw circle method. It's going to take in a list of coordinates. It's going to be these three that we can just copy paste. And we want to grab our pencil property, same as over here. Um, except we don't need this. So pencil pen up, pen color, fill color, and I'm just going to do a quick check. If the length of the coordinates that are passed in is greater than zero, and coordinates should be a list of coordinates. So because I drew those four dots earlier that connected um, the part of the body, we need to give it this last, the first dot again to really connect the whole shape that allows us to fill it all in. So we're just going to append the first shape coordinates dot pen coordinates zero the first coordinate we're going to add it again to the very end of all the coordinates so it completes the whole rectangle for us so we can fill it all in and then if should fill begin fill and at the very end it will be the same as before we end the fill now the only thing we have to do is for every point in the coordinates, we're going to draw them in. We're destructuring the points out of it. We have our X, Y coordinates, pencil dot go to X, Y. This will draw a line between every single one of the points that we listed. So this first point, this point, this point, this point, it's going to start drawing the lines between them. And once the lines are drawn or as we go to each one, we just want to make sure that our pen is down since we lifted it up before. The reason we don't do pen down up here like we did for the circle is because if you go to this while the pen is down, then it's going to, when we draw our polygon, it's going to draw a line from a point that you might not want it to. So we only do pen down after we confirm that we've gone to where we want to go to. And then now that we have that set up, all we have to do is call that method by passing in the points we want. So one more time, let's run this, put them side by side. Let's say our first one is going to be around there. Let's go there, there, and there. So we have those four coordinates. I'm just going to copy that in over here. And notice that we printed it out in a really convenient way because this allows us to just directly paste it into a list. So draw polygon passing in my coordinates into a list should fill is true let's go ahead and see what this does now we have that line for the a right there not bad so let's continue the next one will be this downward shape and another key point to remember is we really want to be going from left to right in a counterclockwise fashion that just helps make sure that one, we're being consistent, and two, when we try to, when we do the begin fill and end fill, it likes that pattern the best to be able to connect the points together. So I'm going to say somewhere over there, and then there, there, and there. Now I have those four points. Draw polygon, pass in the points into the list again. Should fill is true. Let's see. Not perfect, but it's a decent start. And then from there, we're going to just do our final ones for this little block right here and the two triangles, and we'll do some whiteout space. Let me just run that again. So that will be from here 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 and on this one i didn't technically start from the bottom left but it's still slightly okay just as a rule, you should probably keep doing the bottom left. Um, now I'm going to do the triangle. So 
so that looks good. We don't need four shade. We don't need four points all the time. It'll connect whatever you give it. So now that we have our three points. We have one of those triangles drawn. And next, our last part right here. And this looks really ugly right now, but that's okay. We just did this in a couple of minutes. It's our first attempt. You can go back and clean up these numbers later for a more clean shape. Now with most of that being drawn, last but not least would be to get this whiteout space right here. So a simple way of doing that is the same as before. We draw our coordinates forever we want that whiteout space. And we just set the fill color to be white. Now we have that right there, but notice the outline of the fill is still black because we only set the fill color, we didn't set the pen color. And another thing with optional parameters or named parameters, because we're calling it by the name directly, it doesn't even need to be in the same order that's above. I could have flipped the order down here and it would have been perfectly fine. But if we run this now, that whiteout space is gone and we'll do one more on this side. And finally, we have our Avengers logo. It doesn't look perfect, but it's a really quick attempt. For one that's a little closer that I had earlier, um, let me go ahead and run that one. Let's say this one looks a lot better, even though it's still a bit off. So I want you guys to challenge yourselves. Try drawing other things. Don't just stick to logos. You could draw Link. I think that would be really interesting to see. Link image just google up whatever your favorite things are think about how you would do it um let's see what would be a good one for link we could do young smash link and if you find an image that's not too bad you could give it a shot something like a lot of vertices could be complicated like this has curves and folds you want to avoid things like that something flatter would be fine his shield could be a really cool thing to try drawing. So knock yourselves out. I hope you guys have understood the basic principles in this of how you can make shapes and colors with circles and polygons. So let me know what you guys think.